Mace versus Diddy, a timeline of their hip hop beef. The world of hip hop has witnessed its fair share of feuds and conflicts over the years, but few rival the long-standing tension between Mace and Diddy from the early days of their collaboration to the recent allegations and exchanges the rift between these two iconic figures in the industry has captured the attention of fans and critics alike. This video takes a deep dive into the timeline of their beef, shedding light on its origins, the allegations of mistreatment and exploitation, and the intriguing twists and turns that have unfolded. As the clash between Mace and Diddy continues to unfold, it raises broader questions about fairness and transparency within the music industry. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell for insights on other celebrity beefs. How did the beef start? Following his retirement from the music industry in 1999 to pursue a religious path, Mace made two comebacks. The first was in 2004 with the album Welcome Back, which failed to live up to the success of his beloved debut Harlem World and its follow-up Double Up. In 2009, during a live radio interview, May surprised Diddy by presenting him with documents demanding to be released from his contract with Bad Boy Records. Although Diddy signed the documents, it was later revealed that they only permitted Mays to collaborate with other artists or he remained contractually bound to Bad Boy Records. Mace calls out Diddy about royalties. In 2012, Mace informed his fans that he was no longer signed to Bad Boy Records, but since then, he has been openly vocal about his grievances with Puff. Prior to the 2020 Grammys, Diddy delivered a powerful speech at the pre-Gammy Gala while accepting the President's Merit Award. Criticizing the lack of respect for Black music and artists within the industry, this resonated with many, except for one artist mentioned in Diddy's speech. Interestingly, it was Mace who responded. In a now-deleted Instagram post, the former rapper claimed that Puff had refused to sell him the publishing rights to his three albums, despite offering $2 million, which was significantly higher than his original $20,000 advance from 1996, although reports suggest Mace actually signed for $250,000. In a lengthy caption, he expressed his frustration. I heard your hashtag Grammy speech about how you are now for the artist and about how the artist must take back control, he wrote. So I will be the first to take that initiative. Also, before we ask of other ethnicities to do us right, we should do us black people better, especially the creators. I heard you loud and clear when you said that you are now for the artist. And that to my response is that if you want to see change, you can make a change today by starting with yourself. Your past business practices knowingly has continued to purposely starve your artists and been extremely unfair to the very same artists that helped you obtain that icon award on the iconic bad boy label. For example, you still got my publishing from 24 years ago in which you gave me $20,000, which makes me never want to work with you as any artist wouldn't after you know someone is robbing you and tarnishing your name when you don't want to comply with his horrendous business model. Following his allegations of being exploited by Puff for more than 20 years, Mace proceeded to detail the impact this has had on his career in another Instagram post. However, people will always ask, what's up with Mace? So I will be forced to still perform to not look crazy when I was getting peanuts and the robbery would continue. So many great moments and people lives and music were lost. But again, I rode with you in the face of death without flinching and you still wouldn't do right. I never said anything because I wanted to wait until I was financially great so I could ensure that I was addressing this from a pure place and not out of spite. To add insult, you keep screaming black excellent and love, but I know love isn't free. So I offered you two million in cash just a few days ago to sell me back my publishing as his biggest artist alive that always show you respect for you giving me an opportunity at 19 years old. Your response was, if I could match what the European guy offered him, that would be the only way I could get it back. Or else I can't wait until I'm 50 years old and it will revert back to me when I was 19 years old. You bought it for about 20K and I offered you 2 million in cash. This is not black excellence at all. When our own race is enslaving us, if it's about us owning, it can't be about us owning each other. No more hiding behind love. You change, give the artists back their money so they can take care of their families. Mace accuses Diddy of sabotage. He also leveled an accusation against Puff, claiming that he deliberately undermined his performance at the Lovers and Friends Festival. Mace's appearance at the festival in Las Vegas was meant to be a significant moment for both him and the attendees. Unfortunately, 
technical issues plagued his set, and the sound system completely failed for an approximately 10 minutes after he attempted to perform the iconic 1997 track Mo Money Mo Problems, which also featured the notorious B.I.G. and Diddy. Mace expressed his belief that this was not a mere accident, but rather a deliberate act orchestrated by Puff. Addressing the crowd, the New York rapper stated, I see what's going on. I'm used to being hated on. I'm used to what's going on. Somebody, somewhere, paid a few dollars to stop my show. But that can't stop somebody like me. I don't get ran away too easy. I just wasn't ready for that, so I'm gonna take my time. He continued with, thank you, Puff. You know he paid for that, right? I got you, nigga. I heard you loud and clear. Diddy remained silent on the issue, having been occupied with the 2022 Billboard Music Awards, but it would later escalate into a series of exchanges between him and Mace. Mace responds to Diddy's proposition. The ongoing feud persisted later in the year when Diddy appeared on an interview with The Breakfast Club, seeking to address the recurring accusations of mistreatment towards his artists. The founder of Love Records went on a tangent and expressed his thoughts on Mace's continuous claims, stating, just in general, the Mace thing, I did one album with Mace, one album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? Puff said at the 46 minute mark of the sit down in reference to Mace's debut 1997 album, Harlem World. And then he became a fake pastor and went on and conned people. And y'all gonna let him throw dirt on a God's name. Anybody can come and step up, bring your receipts, but I'm not playing. I'm back outside and I'm fighting back for us. And I'm also doing some fighting back for me. Diddy additionally asserting that Mace is indebted to him for a significant sum of $3 million. He pointed out that his amount corresponds to an advance. He allegedly provided Mace for an album that was never delivered. Diddy confidently stated, that's facts. I got the receipts. Shortly after The Breakfast Club broadcasted their interview with Puff on Wednesday, during which the hip hop mogul claimed to possess evidence that Mace owes him $3 million, Mace unsurprisingly took to Instagram to express his strong opposition to these claims. How dare this nigga talk about he want receipts? Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts, nigga. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts, nigga. He followed up by saying, you need more proof, nigga. Biggie ain't here, so Biggie can't give you no receipts. He dead. Craig Mack can't give you receipts. He dead. What are you talking about? Who else? Black Rob can't give you receipts. He dead. And everybody else you made sign paperwork, so they can't talk about what I'm talking about. I'm the only one with the guts to not sign it, nigga, because I don't need the money. All money ain't good money. Remember that. You know who to play with, nigga. Mace versus Fivio Foreign. Interestingly, Mace himself faced allegations of wrongdoing from another New York artist he attempted to support in launching his career, Fivio Foreign. Fivio initially gained prominence around four years ago with his underground hit, Blix Key in a Box. Mace recognized Fivio's potential and promptly offered him a contract to join his Rich Fish label. During an episode of the Million Dollars Worth of Game podcast, Fivio disclosed that he readily signed the deal and received a $5,000 advance. Reflecting on the matter, Fivio commented, Mace was like, yo man, just sign that shit. You bugging. I'm like, yeah, read it. He's like, all right, just sign it. It's good. So I just sign it. During that time, Fivio candidly shared with the podcast host that he lacked knowledge of the intricate workings of major labels and had expected his advance to sustain him for a significantly longer period than it ultimately did. That shit hit. I thought that shit was going to last until whenever it was going to last. That shit ain't last two weeks. The podcast host, Wallow267, displayed visible disappointment at the modest sum provided by Mace to Fivio, especially in light of Mace's own issues with Diddy. However, Fivio reassured the host that he harbored no resentment towards the deal. The rapper said, I don't really be complaining or crying over spilled milk. I already made this decision. For me, I'm in a better situation now. He get what he get, but I control my money. After being dubbed Diddy 2.0, Mace made his own appearance on a million dollars worth of game podcast to address the situation and clarify that it wasn't as negative as Fivio portrayed it. According to Mace, the actual amount he offered was significantly higher, approximately $745,000 higher to be precise. Sharing his perspective on the matter, Mace stated, I had to put a file together of all the history that was left out. At one time, I gave him $5,000, but I gave him $750,000.
Mace explains that he structured Fibio's Rich Fish deal in the way that allowed him to be involved in Fibio's negotiations with major labels like Def Jam in Colombia. He even provides evidence on his phone, including calls to Colombia executives during the podcast to demonstrate that he attempted to offer Fibio a fair 50-50 split on all their earnings. However, given Fibio's admission of lacking business knowledge at the time, it is possible that he misunderstood the situation. It is also conceivable that Mace is presenting a story in a way that portrays himself as the hero. As is often the case, the truth likely lies somewhere in the middle, with details getting blurred in the retelling. Ultimately, this situation highlights the need for significant reforms in the music industry to ensure the transparency and fairness for both artists and the professionals who contribute to their success. The Mace vs. Diddy beef has spanned decades, capturing the attention of hip-hop fans and raising questions about fairness in the music industry. Mace's accusations shed light on the artist's challenges, while Diddy's counterclaims add complexity to the feud. The situation with Fibio Foreign highlights the need for transparent practices. This ongoing conflict reflects broader issues of artist rights and financial transparency. Who do you think is right or wrong in the Mace and Diddy situation? Let us know in the comments below and stay tuned for updates and subscribe for more on Celebrity Feuds. Thank you for watching.